Howdy, if you're watching this video, then you just downloaded and probably opened Zoner Photo Studio X for the first time and looking for some solid tips on how to utilize the program for yourself. Well, you're in luck because in this video, we're going to be covering where certain tools are located in the program and the basics of how the program is laid out, where you'll find certain functions, how to utilize them and so forth. So let's stop wasting time and let's jump in. So first off, this video isn't about breaking down every minute detail, but creating an overview to help you understand the broad basics of ZPSX. All right, here in the upper left corner, we'll find the menu, and underneath that, we'll find the navigator. Uh, here we also have all of our folders, files, external and internal hard drives, and so forth. Notice that the catalog is right here, as well as the Zoner photo cloud, and our free online gallery, Zonorama. So you can find out more about these on a, in separate videos on the same channel. And if I were to recommend one, I strongly recommend the catalog series because that goes into a lot of depth of what Zoner can do. And you'll find the link below in the description. Looking here, we'll find the Explorer in the middle of the interface where you'll also find your thumbnails, photo folders, and or videos. And what we see here is directly correlated to our selection in the navigator. Because the pictures folder is selected in the navigator, the contents of it appears right here in the explorer, which in this case are other subfolders. If you want to check out the contents of a folder, then you can just double click it and it'll open. If you want to get a large preview of a photo, then just do the same thing by double clicking. Or we can click here on the icon named Preview, which is right here. Here underneath the Explorer, notice the film strip, which displays the contents of the folder you're currently in. You can browse through individual photos, rate them or sort them. And of course, you can also perform these actions in the browser. We can use the same keyboard shortcuts we're all used to in Windows, such as Control and then the left mouse click to select multiple photos and work them as you see fit. Now to the right side of the interface, we can see all the information about a given photo. And you'll find all the relevant metadata that was applied to a particular photo we're viewing, such as the exposure, lens used, camera used, and so on. We can also edit the info, such as the title, description, and keywords to optimize our library and organize things nicely according to our preference. In particular, keywords are a very strong tool that we can use to organize and later find the images we need. There's a great video we've made on this subject, and I also highly recommend viewing this if you want to save lots of time sorting and organizing your library. Now if you move up a bit higher, you'll notice the histogram. This shows us if there are any underexposed or overexposed parts on the photo where the light spectrum resides. And above the histogram, you'll find the five different modules of Zonar Photo Studio X. Next to the manager module, you'll find the develop module, which is the main module you should be using to edit and improve photographs quickly. It has a wide arsenal of tools aimed at changing exposure, color corrections, tone curves, and plenty of others like retouching, tone curves, and so on. A big advantage with this module is that all of our edits are non-destructive, which means that any edits you make are not permanent and you can come back and change them or undo them at any time if a week or year later you decide that the edits that you made aren't really what you want. So we can see these edits on the photograph, but in reality, these changes are merely attributes to the real photograph and are not actually applied to the original. They're actually a really small file saved next to the original folder in its folder location. The develop module is also able to apply these non-destructive edits to our raw files. And if you're happy with your edit, you can export it to its final form. The module next to that is the editor module, and that provides editing with masks and layers for further manipulation of your photos. And everything is nicely connected and ZPSX. And to give an example, say we're editing in the develop modules and we realize that some basic retouching is just not going to cut it. We'll simply open the image in the editor module and finish up what you started. The next module is the print module. And this lets us create physical products from our pictures like photo books, calendars, canvas prints, and so on. Everything here is designed with user friendliness in mind. 
say we want to create a photo book. All we have to do is choose a template and then simply drag and drop the pictures we want from the film strip onto the template. There are many ways we can adjust the styles and look of our photo book. And here I recommend taking a look at the corresponding video that shows lots of methods of how to play with various products in the print module. Lastly, we have a video module, which of course allows us to do basic edits with video recordings. We can combine various clips together, add audio recordings or music, and we can adjust the exposure like we would in the develop module with our pictures and then export our video to its final iteration. The UI is in a timeline format and is made up of individual tracks where we can add individual videos from the film strip which should look familiar from the other modules in the program we've already gone through. It's great that there's no need to learn anything new and that the same principles apply very much the same as with other parts of the program. Okay, that's it for now. I hope, you, hope that gave you a nice overview of how the program is laid out, where to find everything. If you liked what you saw, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the notification bell below so you are aware and alerted when we create new videos because there will be more coming out. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. See you later.